Welcome to the Bootleg Zones. <laughs> Hey, have you ever thought, I really need to celebrate Toy Story, but stupid Easter's in the way? Well, why don't you combine them with Toy Story eggs? You've got me inside an egg. You've got me inside an egg. Why is this happening? Now, um, need to try and open these eggs without destroying the Toy Story sticker. See if we can do that. Mm. Stupid packaging. Why is it like this? Why would they do it? I don't know. It doesn't just come apart all the way either. It's got like a latch on this side, so makes it not easy. I tried to start peeling the sticker off to see if I could open it cleanly that way, but no, of course the sticker doesn't want to come off nicely either. Stupid Toy Story. And yeah, now the thing's getting even worse about how it's peeling off. Toy Story eggs, wow, dumb. Oh, Woody's egg popped open nicely though. <laughs> I guess just old Buzz wanted to be a and wow, just look at these wonderful Toy Story figures. I never thought they needed a head. <laughs> so here's the Woody and Buzz figures after you take them out of the eggs. I'm guessing Buzz needs to pull his head out of his ass, which seems very apt. So let's see if there's a head anywhere hidden in these figures. Whoa. Um, to open his chest somewhere. There we go. Oh. Yeah, there he is. Wonderful. <laughs> he looks so cool. I'm amazed. All right, Woody's turn. If I can get his legs out from his back. He doesn't want to let me move any part of him. It feels like it's gonna break. Okay, how do your legs move, Woody, you piece of crap? There we go. All right, open your chest for your head, I assume. Da da. <laughs> uh huh. Hard to get his head out. There we go. Wow, that sure is some guy. I guess if we put his hat on him, we'll all know this is Woody. Yeah, yeah. Now that's perfect. Wonderful. Really cool figures here. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that is a wonderfully bad Buzz Lightyear face there. It's about as good as that doofy one the bootleggers kept reusing on a bunch of figures. And then there's poor Woody. <laughs> what have they done to you? We take his hat off, though. Then he's, uh, a lost-looking Muppet. So, I don't know. I don't really understand these stupid figures, like... Yeah, it's real cool that they came in an egg, and that means, you know, they can't really have any articulation that's, you know, worth a damn, <laughs> unless you want Woody to bend his legs into the back of his head. Yeah! Awesome! And of course, his arms and legs are hollow nightmares from behind. But here's cool Buzz Lightyear from behind. He looks a lot better, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, let me move my arm. Oh, I can't. Because I suck, I can do this, though. Do, 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 do. It's like we can pretend he's swimming, I guess, sort of. Doing a kind of crappy stroke underwater. Whoa. And he can kind of kick his legs like he's swimming. Yeah, th that's what these are. These are the underwater Buzz and Woody. <laughs> Since Buzz has bigger feet, he stands easier than the Woody figure. But just really, why do these stupid figures exist? Why Toy Story in an egg? Hey Woody, did you watch my new shitty series, The Santa Clauses? I mean, Glupshido Origins? I did. 
And I've been spending this whole time trying to forget it. <laughs> Everything about these figures is just super awkward. The faces they're making, the pose, the fact they come in an egg in the first place. And I guess Woody isn't too good at shaving. Either that or he's just got a bunch of dirt on his chin. Look at that stupid face. Like, what an idiot. <laughs> oh, Morty. <laughs> I'm the main hero of Toy Story. Trust in me, Woody. Blah, blah, blah. How dare Woody say he's the main character? I'm the main character. Glop Shadow. And look what I can do. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, take that, Woody. Piece of shit. Oh, why? Why is this happening? Oh, <laughs> don't watch the Santa Clauses. It was a huge mistake. Oh. Hey, look at this. You can stick Woody's hat on the back of his head via the screw hole. Pretty cool, right? They're truly majestic, aren't they? Like soulless husks. Maybe these are Toy Story zombies. I don't know. This orange backdrop isn't big enough for the two of us, Woody. We must fight in eggs. I can't care to fight you, Buzz. I just seen my entire family murdered in front of me. I hate that story, Woody. Let's battle. Enough of this! Buzz, return! What the? No! Ah, why? Why? I loved you, Ash. I could have been your best toy. Ah! Oh no, he doesn't fit in the Pokeball. <laughs> Garbage buzz broke out! Looks like I'm gonna have to use a stupid egg ball! I did it! I caught a glup shitto! What in tarnation? That just ain't right, boy! I don't feel good being your toy anymore, Ash. I'm emancipating myself. I don't care. I don't go to my room anyway. I've been on the road for 25 years. Wow, your family sure must not care about you. Well, my mom's either too busy boinking a Mr. Mime or Professor Oak, and my dad is, I don't know. He could be Giovanni, but. That would require us to do complex storylines, and we kind of gave up after season one on those. Well, that sure does suck, Ash. Have you ever met my aunt, though? She's really cool. She's really invested in my Pokemon journey. Well, in a promo tape she is anyway. She never talks to me either. None of my family talks to me that much. <laughs> Pikachu, console me! Pikachu! Guess that was not very effective. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be going. I'm gonna go find a more worthy boy. Like that wonderful Gary Oak. I think he'd really appreciate a toy like me. Gary! No! Toy Story Ball, go! What, Ash? I trusted you for some reason, even though all I did was just berate you. Oh, why? Why? No, please, Ash. I wasn't really gonna go to Garrett. I did it. I'm finally the champion. I finally learned after these 25 years that compassion is what was holding me back. I won't have that anymore. I will rule the Pokemon world with an iron fist. Right, Pikachu? Pika, fuck. 
<laughs> you said it. Hey, have you ever wanted to see yourself as a Ghostbuster? Of course you have, and now you can. I mean, without doing this. As part of the 30th anniversary for Ghostbusters and part of the 3D Me series by Cubify, you can have a 3D printed out statue of you as a Ghostbuster. There are a few other things you can stick your face on in the 3D Me line, like horror figures and Star Trek, but who cares? Ghostbusters! I'm always happy when I can look over and see a little statue of me as a Ghostbuster. Helps me think of myself as being much cooler than I actually am. The process to make one of these is fairly simple. Just put in a pretty clear picture of yourself facing straight onto the camera. Also, make sure the picture isn't too dark and the color is decently balanced or it seems you might turn out a bit orange or something. And watch out if you add this picture because you might just find out that BUSTING DOESN'T WORK THAT WAY! Or we could always have... Zero, THE GREATEST GHOSTBUSTERS CHARACTER! What? Now the only thing actually grabbed from your picture you upload is your face. There are a few hairstyles to choose from after uploading your face, but it's not gonna be exact. Also, while doing this process, watch out for internet ghosts. The preview is a nice thing to have though, and they even let you save a pic from them. However, if you zoom in all the way on a couple of the poses, the top of the head gets cropped out. It feels like you should have better control to move and zoom around to see what you're actually getting made to make sure it's gonna turn out okay, especially at $70 a figure. What's also weird is it seems Ghostbusters is the only one with this preview feature. I wouldn't even want to chance getting one of these made without at least being able to preview it. So while the Ghostbusters one is more advanced in that aspect, strangely the other ones ask you for a profile pic as well, and the Ghostbusters one doesn't. For the picture you upload, it tells you to have a neutral face, but I didn't want a blank face looking figure, so I cheated a bit, gave a a little smirk and a raised eyebrow, of course. That seemed to work out just fine for the figure. Also, yes, of the four poses, I knew which one I had to get. Actually, I didn't. So hey, remember that barely used bootleg zone segment? Making the face? Let's do that here! Whoa! 100%? Damn, I'm good! Well, okay, that might be stretching it a little. The cheekbones are a bit much, and while it does get my goatee in there, it's a bit faded in areas. Leading to one of the biggest issues with these figures, the clearness. As in, it's not really. These do look pretty good from a little bit of a distance, but if you look at them up close, you'll see the details are a bit blurry. Like with the name tag. At first, I was really hoping they'd give you the option to put a custom name on there, but I see now why they didn't, because you wouldn't be able to read it. Even Cubify's own logo on the bottom of the base is kind of hard to see. Also, the texture on the color stone they use to 3D print these statues gives them almost a fuzzy look. Which leads me to one of the things that annoys me about their website. While they do have some pictures of what the statues actually look like, they're pretty small. For the most part, it just seems to be 3D models they're showing you, and those aren't very representative of what the statues actually look like. That said, I do still think this is pretty cool and likely about what you can expect from this technology for just 70 bucks at this point. I'm sure 3D printed stuff like this for consumers will be able to be made much sharper in the future though. Overall though, I'm pretty happy with it. I can even place myself in the Ghostbusters firehouse now, or with the real Ghostbusters! Yeah, that's right guys, I know the Ghostbusters, jealous? And we can't forget Slimer! No, wait! <laughs> Frankie Slimer! Ah, I hate Slimer! So 
So around the end of the 90s, I got pretty big into two things, Attitude Era Wrestling and Pokemon. Pretty similar, I know, so it was a pretty big Pokemark. I watched the cartoon, had my copy of Red, had my copy of Red, and I collected Pokemon cards. Come on, you as a Ghostbuster! Maybe the fact I now have a little figure of me as a Ghostbuster makes me overlook some of the flaws a bit, but I don't know. What I do know is Bustin makes me feel good. Well, I, I'm sure it would if I could actually do it. <laughs> Tell me what it's like, you stupid little failing figure! At the height of Pokemania came the Pokemon trading card game. This was also during the time that absolutely everything was getting a collectible card game made of it. And the company responsible for that boom was the original publishers of the cards over here, which was the Wizards of the Coast. And the game they created this boom with was, of course, Magic the Gathering, which I was also in due for like a week or two until I sold them all for a nice little profit. But I still got my Pokemon cards because, well, I liked them better and I usually saved most things around this point. I even ended up with this store display for the theme decks, and I believe that was because my mom bought me some of these for a present once, and because she bought the last ones, they just gave this to her. I might be making that up. These theme decks were centered around two different types, with the water and fighting one being called Blackout, and the electric and psychic one being called Zap. But I guess water type and grass type were the favorite as they got featured on two of these things with the water and grass one being called overgrowth and the fire and grass one being called brush fire. No love to the poor normal types. These theme decks were a good way of getting certain hollow cards you needed. And of course there was also the regular starter deck. And these decks came with a first edition holographic Machamp! So, of course, absolutely everyone had one of those. And then, of course, you had the regular booster packs of cards, which in the base set showed pictures of Venusaur, Blastoise, and Charizard. And I also have the wrapper for one pack from Fossil, which features Zapdos. I love some of the really helpful information they show on the back of this stand. Hey, did you know you need Pokemon cards to play Pokemon cards? I guess they didn't actually give you a play mat back at this point, just had Professor Oak telling you, Hey, this is what it should look like. Do it. To play, you'd also need these coins, or any coin really, to do the coin flip directions on some cards. These featured Chansey on them because... Chance. <laughs> Clever. You also needed these damage counters, which I apparently have four unopened bags of still. <laughs> Can you tell us more into collecting these than playing the game? I can't believe I had a collector's mentality about these cards. So the majority of my collection of the Pokemon cards is a complete set of the original base set. And I do have the Japanese version of Alakazam, because someone gave me that at one point. I always found it kind of interesting that the design of the hollow background on these two was different. And of course, this shows how different the card backs are with the Pocket Monsters version versus the Pokemon ones. I remember that Blastoise and Charizard were a couple of the last ones I needed to complete this set. And unfortunately, the Charizard I have is the one with the shadow, so it's not the super rare, costs a million dollars, or like 300 version. As mentioned briefly earlier, during the Wizards of the Coast version of the Pokemon trading card game, you could get certain cards with a first edition logo on them, which were rarer. Well, except really in Machamp's case here. Also, in the starter decks, Machamp came in his own little plastic covering, so I left that on them. And then we have our second page of all hollow cards. Well, except for that damn Beedrill who always ruins everything. I never really understood why the first Mewtwo card sucked so much, considering he was the most overpowered Pokemon in that first game. After I'd gotten Blastoise and Charizard, I remember Raichu here was the absolute last card I needed to complete the set, and I ended up trading my friend Thomas to get him for some double of a hollow I had. 
Also, this Zapdos here is something I actually pulled from my first pack of Pokemon cards, so I always liked this one. Then you have your non-holo rares. The way they set the set the set the set up is you'd have your best cards at the start, and then it gets worse as you go along. And if you didn't know, with Pokemon cards, they indicate their rarity with a little symbol in the bottom right corner. With a star for rare, a diamond for uncommon, and a circle for common. One of the kind of odd things I found with the base set was they didn't let you finish certain evolution chains, like you could only get to Pidgeotto and Dragonair. I guess it was probably done just to let you know that more were coming, and that they would never stop. I found it rather amusing, too, that Magikarp was uncommon when that certainly wasn't the case in the game. It was always neat with the Pokemon cards, all the different types of artwork you would find on them. And you would see things with Pokemon that you might not normally. Like this depiction of Diglett that makes it actually look furry. I also just like a lot of the older Pokemon drawings like this. Especially when the Pokemon has changed quite a bit over the years due to becoming the mascot or something, and Pikachu slimmed down quite a bit from his early days. Then you had other kind of odd things like Starmie and Staryu both being common, apparently. And then we get to the trainer cards, and it's kind of funny how many of these were labeled rare. Which was 11 of these things, apparently. Man, did you ever fight the super rare lass in the game? But of course the standout for me in the trainer cards was Imposter Professor Oak. I really wish this had happened at some point. Also, de-evolution spray, something else that would be kind of nice. And stupid old regular Professor Oak, who likes him when you have an imposter around? Even these trainer cards were pretty neat at the time, because they're the first good look at a lot of the items in the game. And again, some of these things' designs changed quite a bit. So here's the last of the trainer cards, and now we get to what people really want to see. The energy cards! So rare! Or they're too common even for the common marker, whatever. But hey, I can still impress you with my black diamond Pokemon cards, right? You know what those are, don't ya? So I didn't collect as much after the base set, but there was one Pokemon that wasn't included in the base set that I really wanted the card of. And that was of course Meowth. Why? Because Meowth's my favorite Pokemon. He was my favorite character in the anime, and Payday! That makes you money. It makes it the best move ever. That made me also have to pick up this Meowth Hollow card, just because there was a Meowth Hollow card, so I wanted it. And here I have the Meowth from Jungle and Team Rocket. And I even have a first edition of Jungle Meowth! And same for slightly slimmed down Jungle Pikachu. Well, there was a part of me that still wanted to keep collecting these to get all the original 151 Pokemon. I just didn't really keep up with them. But he still did get a few neat ones after. This even more slimmed down Pikachu was the card I got for going to see Pokemon the first movie. And this Dragonite is the card my sister got. And then she gave to me when she lost interest. And then there's this version of Promo Mewtwo, which was inserted with the VHS release of the first movie. And here's, of course, one of the most different Pokemon cards ever released, Ancient Mew. These were given out when you went to go see the second Pokemon movie, so this one was just given to me by my sister, I believe, because I did not go see the second movie. Then I got a couple hollows from the Fossil set, Kabutops and Gengar, and a hollow from the Rocket set, Dark Blastoise. But he is definitely not darker than my Blatty Doyce that the Hall of Fame called my Blastoise after I caught missing no. Then I got a couple repeats and non-hollow Zapdos from Fossil. When he's less special, it seems kind of weird they put him on the package of that one. And a few more from Rocket, Fossil, and Jungle. And REGULAR! Now here's some of the only ones I have from Base Set 2, which I have no idea where the hell they came from anymore. But it is kind of interesting to see how much more yellow the Base Set 2 version of the card is. 
And speaking of color difference, there's a big one between the English version of Professor Oak and the Japanese one. The card got a much higher contrast on the English version compared to the Japanese one. They included a fossil in the fossil set. Well, I never. And here's Chaos D1's nightmare. Poor Jigglypuff getting sent to the recycling. This card's kind of amazing, because that's just ridiculously depressing if you think about it. Don't worry, Jigglypuff, you'll live on in base set two. Some more stinking old fossils, including the best slowpoke ever. Now, here's some things that I don't really know the legitimacy of, which are the Pokemon card stickers. These were hollow all over versions of the Japanese cards, but they're slightly smaller than legit Pokemon or Pocket Monster cards, and as you can see, the backs of them weren't always the best quality. So maybe these strange things should have been shown on bootleg zones. However, that is what I'm going to show you guys next time on bootleg zones, actual bootleg Pokemon cards. Look at this oddish since when are they all green like that and some of these kind of get a little scary like magnemite here it's lost the pupil of its eye so it looks like it's either dead or possessed you even had these shiny stickers of energies i know everyone just want to stick energies everywhere and in the little packs I used to pick up the sticker versions of the cards, they'd also have these type as well. These ones definitely seem more legit than the trading card stickers. These ones actually being marked by Bandai. These could have been sold together out of sticker machines. I don't know for sure. It just seems that the trading card versions are a bit lazier. Plus, with these ones, you can read up on what happened in the anime. Especially, uh... Whatever that was all about. A lot of these type stickers, though, just seem to feature Pikachu with another Pokemon by him. And even when it features a couple that aren't Pikachu, you still got a little Pikachu and a Pokeball logo in the corner. I like some of the ones like this, though, that just have random hearts and stars going around the Pokemon and balls. And if you didn't think the hearts and stars were weird enough... Then you got Graveler next to some ones with strange faces drawn on them, and the star is apparently dead. And we'll end this on the three starters. Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Mew! <laughs> so that's my Pokemon card slash weird stickers collection. Wait, is Mew white or pink? It's like Kirby, you can't fucking decide what color he is. <laughs> I hate love Slimer! He's my best buddy! Oh no, my Ghostbuster just got Kool-Aid! <laughs>